Early one morning, as the sky transformed from dark to light with whispers of deep blue, an enchanting atmosphere swirled throughout the vibrant community. The sun began to stretch its golden rays, and while the world awoke with anticipation, one individual wrestled with the heaviness of discontent. Miss Trunchbull, feeling more like a storm cloud than a sunny day, woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Thoughts of her hometown echoed in her mind, a bittersweet symphony drowning out the beautiful morning. She remembered the comforting halls of Cruncham Hall Primary School, where she once felt like a true leader alongside Miss Honey before this chaotic chapter began. Yet, as she rubbed the sleep from her eyes, an unusual sensation swept over her. It felt like tiny, smooth beads dancing on her skin. When clustered, they merged into a gritty texture reminiscent of a sun-kissed beach. A spark of curiosity ignited within her. She needed to investigate this peculiar feeling. Her heart raced as she unearthed a turkey disguise, its feathers shimmering under the morning light. In an impulsive swirl of determination, she donned the costume and casually decided to infiltrate the school unnoticed, driving her desire to regain control. With a twinkle of mischief in her eyes, Miss Trunchbull stealthily crept into the school of shimmering hues, the skylights casting enchanting blues and greens through the corridors. She found the classroom adorned with a portrait of Mr. Turkey and instantly felt authoritative energy surge through her. Declaring herself the new principal, she arrogantly introduced her rules, the air thick with tension as the students stared wide-eyed, unsure of their fates. She menacingly described the Chokey, a sinister room lined with spikes, keeping everyone glued to their seats. A tumult erupted when a soft knock echoed off the classroom walls. The air shifted as joy rippled through the anxious students upon hearing the familiar name. Please welcome Miss Honey. As the door opened, an unexpected twist revealed Mr. Turkey in the role of Miss Honey, protesting Miss Trunchbull's insidious plans. Since when did I become Miss Honey? He questioned with a mix of disbelief and indignation. The classroom buzzed with confusion, revealing the contrast between Miss Trunchbull's harshness and the warmth associated with their beloved turkey teacher. Desperation fed the chaos as students whispered furiously about their beloved Mr. Turkey's fate. Who would prevail, the strict disciplinarian or the compassionate educator? Whispers of the minuscule bead sensation lingered, hinting not merely at a new beginning, but rather a challenge to reclaim their magic. As laughter danced through the hall, optimism flickered in the air, a promise of an adventure teetering on the brink of absurdity, waiting to unfold. In a lively discussion echoing through the halls of Cruncham Hall School, Mr. Turkey passionately shared tales of unity amidst diversity, shedding light on the vibrant tapestry of students from various tribes. Each word painted images of students hailing from the Arapaho, Cherokee, Navajo and Apache tribes, all joining together as one harmonious community. The pride in the principal's Cherokee heritage reflected a commitment to celebrating diversity, enhancing the school's atmosphere, and forging connections across cultures as Mr. Turkey spoke. The excitement in the air was palpable. A doorway suddenly creaked open, revealing a dog named Sarah, astonishingly brought into conversation. With a unique twist in the narrative, Sarah naturally embraced her role but firmly reminded everyone of her true identity. She was a dog, not Miss Honey. This whimsical exchange introduced laughter into an otherwise tension-filled environment, juxtaposing authority with innocence. Just as the dialogue thickened, Miss Trunchbull, known for her strict demeanor, decided to interject her formidable presence. Claiming control, she proclaimed her new role as principal over the intercom, a booming announcement echoing in each classroom. This sudden twist evoked a range of emotions among the students, some feeling uneasy while others were amused by the spectacle. Miss Trunchbull outlined strict rules that seemed increasingly humorous given the context. With the unveiling of a new layering of authority, Sarah found herself in the comical predicament of being forced into the role of Miss Honey, sparking playful protestations that filled the air with laughter and disbelief. The tone shifted dramatically as Miss Trunchbull reveled in her newfound power, blissfully ignorant of the holiday spirit approaching. As Thanksgiving loomed, a dissonance lingered between her rulings and the warmth the season typically embodies. Amidst all the chaos, Sarah and her classmates contemplated their next move. An unexpected camaraderie rose within the students, urging them to rally against the unusual turn of events initiated by Miss Trunchbull. 
United in purpose, they prepared for a confrontation that promised to carve a new chapter in their school's narrative, one marked not only by rules and rigidity, but also by joy, laughter, and the spirit of resistance. In a school filled with ruckus, Mr. Turkey's classroom stood proudly on one side of the hall, a sanctuary of laughter. Directly across, Sarah's classroom housed the hopeful and curious, eagerly anticipating news from their beloved teacher. Would you guys kindly wait patiently? Sarah's voice rang like a warm bell, reassuring her students. They grinned, comforted by the knowledge that Mr. Turkey would be looking in on them from time to time. The safety of Mr. Turkey was a small but mighty anchor in the bustling day. Meanwhile, Miss Trunchbull's strict rules stretched across the walls like ominous vines, wrapping around the minds of students and teachers alike. But on this day, something felt different. The atmosphere pulsed with unrest. Sarah, her nails clicking against the floor, navigated through the chaos as if cradled in the arms of an unseen guardian. As she entered the office, her spirit bolstered by courage, the heavy presence of Miss Trunchbull sat comfortably, a puppet master among her toys. Oh, hey, Miss Honey, the principal greeted her, a smirk playing on her lips. Don't you dare, Miss Honey, me. Sarah shot back with the fierceness of a lioness protecting her cubs. She was determined to uncover the fate of Mr. Cherokee, her dearly cherished colleague. Just then, Mr. Navajo, the seemingly nonchalant secretary, reviewed the unsettling footage revealing the chilling truth. The principal had ousted Mr. Cherokee from his position, an act dripping with malice. We're going to find him. We're going to get him his job back, Mr. Navajo vowed, a solemn promise suspended in the air. However, before their spirits could lift, the sharp voice of Miss Trunchbull shattered their resolve, declaring, I am the principal now. The tension was palpable, a brewing storm that necessitated action. Sarah's eyes fell on a peculiar cubby in her classroom. Its presence a harbinger of bad news, I'm back. Something magically appeared, and it's not your fault, she told her students ominously, revealing the dreadful choky system being installed. Instinctively, her students voiced the truth. They knew all too well the puppeteer behind these sinister strings, Miss Trunchbull, while Mr. Turkey's tiny beads of joy lit up his classroom. A knock interrupted the harmony, announcing yet another decree from the tyrant. A shadow loomed over Sarah as Trunchbull commanded her to imprison her students, igniting a fierce resolve. It was time for the puppets to cut their strings and reclaim their power amid the chaos. In that moment, the atmosphere in the classroom changed as Sarah's door clicked shut. She faced her students, eyes filled with determination. I am not putting y'all through that, she declared firmly, conveying the depth of her resolve. The word choky hung in the air like a warning bell pulsating with the possibility of dread, the very essence of fear lingering with the mention of it. At that instant, the calm was shattered by a decisive knock on the wall, echoing ominously like a distant thunderstorm. They all knew who had arrived. Miss Trunchbull, the embodiment of tyranny and the unnerving presence that overshadowed their educational sanctuary. As anxiety rippled through the classroom, a student whispered, What do we do? Panic clung to the edges of their voices like mist. But Sarah, their shield, quickly responded, Just come hide near my desk. Her words acted like a protective spell, weaving a veil of safety. Outside, beyond the threshold, brilliant clouds of bright white smoke poured ominously into the hallway, twisting and turning, shifting colors that danced in the light. It was an innocent classroom, but today it seemed to scream of chaos. The chilling voice of Miss Trunchbull pierced through their hidden fortress. Open the door! I know what you're doing in there. The weight of her words dropped heavily in the room, thickening the air around them. Across the hall, the charismatic figure of Mr. Turkey emerged, nonchalant and confrontational. Where in your unrealistic rules does it say that I can't let minuscule beads flow in my classroom? He questioned defiantly. The tension crackled as Mr. Turkey's presence became a rebellious storm against Miss Trunchbull's rule. Energy shifted. His classroom transformed the very essence of the choky into a sanctuary of relaxation and creativity. Let them bask in the beads, he exclaimed passionately. It's like walking through a sandy beach. With these words echoing like a mantra, Miss Trunchbull seethed at the insolence, announcing she would confront Sarah directly. 
The classroom door flung open and closed again with harsh finality after their fiery exchange, as if sealing in the students' collective dread. The silence that followed felt heavy, while Sarah and her students learned yet again the enduring strength of courage against oppression. As Miss Trunchbull approached the inevitable clash with Mr. Turkey, the atmosphere crackled with tension. Each step she took reverberated down the hallway, echoing her determination. Her eyes glinted with a fierce resolve, drawing wide contrast to the soft murmurs of children seeping from the classrooms nearby. Shaking off any lingering remnants of her encounter, she directed her focus towards the door of Sarah's classroom, now filled with unsuspecting students. The clash of wills was brewing, and she could feel every flicker of defiance in the air. With calculated finesse, Miss Trunchbull meandered towards the door, her presence commanding and unyielding. Upon reaching the threshold, she unleashed a thunderous series of knocks that shook the very panes of glass in the window. Her voice bellowed like a siren, demanding entry. Open the door, Miss Honey. Your students are not to be shielded from my justice. The words seemed to bounce off the walls, filled with authority and menace. She should not have underestimated the strength of Sarah's protective instincts, which formed an invisible barrier between herself and Miss Trunchbull's wrath. The door swung open, revealing a confrontation thick with unspoken words. The tension hung palpably as Sarah responded, her voice laced with indignation. What did you just call me? The air crackled with electricity as Miss Trunchbull seized the moment, hurling accusations. She laid bare her draconian rules, threatening Sarah's students like a hawk eyes its prey. One of your students will soon learn the consequences of your insubordination, she spat, bearing her intentions in a chilling declaration. Without hesitation, she whisked one student away, their desperate screams echoing in the hall, trying to escape the looming shadow of fate. You'll regret this, Miss Honey, Miss Trunchbull warned, her cold eyes glimmering with malicious triumph. Just then, chaos erupted within the confines of the Chokey. Sarah rushed to confront the horror unfolding inside, her heart racing as she opened the door. The muffled cries of a terrified child poured out, each sound a stark reminder of Trunchbull's ominous grip. What happened? Sarah gasped, the urgency in her voice nearly palpable. She cradled her injured student with fierce tenderness, likening her determination to a protective shield, and her resolve crystallized in that moment. Together they would defy the tyranny the school had come to know. We're going to the nurse, Sarah declared, unyielding like a mother hen shielding her chicks. The other students rallied behind her, every one of them knowing what they faced. Miss Trunchbull's voice echoed through the corridor, attempting to reinstate her oppressive order, but Sarah's heart surged with fiery defiance, a storm ready to break free. With the nurse's office in sight, hope flickered within them, paving the way towards healing and safety. As they entered, a compassionate caregiver awaited, ready to mend what Miss Trunchbull had tried to break. Let's take care of you, she cooed, offering solace amid the tempest. In the cozy confines of the nurse's office, a warm light filtered through the window, casting gentle shadows on the pale walls. The nurse, a compassionate Choctaw Native American woman, sat beside the struggling student, engaging him with a soothing presence. She leaned in closer, her voice soft and inviting, asking, What happened? The student was lost in his thoughts, fear and confusion clouding his eyes. Miss Trunchbull was all he could muster, a hint of distress evident in his tone. The Choctaw woman pressed on, determined to uncover the truth. Could you tell me exactly what happened? The student, still disoriented, began to find his voice once again. It was a needle, he explained, his words falling into the atmosphere like fragile leaves. The small, suffocating room felt overwhelming as he mentioned a box. His distress was palpable, a signal urging the kind woman to dig deeper. Meanwhile, another student, Sarah, stood beside them, asserting, I know what he's talking about. Miss Trunchbull put him in the chokey because I was shielding my students from her unrealistic expectations. A shroud of tension hung in the air, vibrantly alive with disbelief. Suddenly, the intercom beeped, shattering the fragile calm. Miss Trunchbull, a commanding voice erupted. Get to the office now. It was Mr. Navajo, his tone laced with urgency. Before the shock could settle, another voice chimed in. What is the meaning of this, Mr.? Cherokee's voice boomed, shaking the very foundations of the school. Miss Trunchbull, startled, stammered her response. 
What? She gasped in disbelief. The truth echoed through the room as Mr. Cherokee confronted her. You realize you just injured a student with your unrealistic expectations? His words struck like a thunderclap. As the confrontation unfolded, a semblance of justice emerged, I want you out of my school, Mr. Cherokee declared with unwavering authority. I'm taking out all the chokies, and I'm shredding your unrealistic expectations. In that moment, a wave of relief washed over the students. But Miss Trunchbull's fate was sealed as Mr. Cherokee took action, ensuring she would face the consequences of her actions. Bagpipe music pierced the air, drowning out her feeble protests, transforming that school into a sanctuary once more. After the storm subsided and the students left, Sarah returned to the nurse's office. The Choctaw woman looked at the injured student with understanding, revealing the depth of his pain. It's not as easy as it seems. This is deeper, she admitted softly. Sarah felt a pang of sorrow and guilt as she approached. I'm sorry this happened to you. I wish I could have told Miss Trunchbull to leave, but it was too late. With resolve, she reassured the student. Now that Mr. Cherokee is back, our sanctuary will be returned to its normal state. As the last bell echoed through the hallways, signaling the end of another school day, students poured out of the building, their laughter trailing behind. Yet amidst the bustling crowd, one student remained behind, bathed in the soft glow of the nurse's office. Its bluish-green walls radiated a soothing calmness, perfectly harmonizing with the gentle care provided by the Choctaw nurse. She was a beacon of hope, her presence resonating warmth as she tended to the young boy in her care. Suddenly, a young woman entered the scene, her hair flowing gracefully like a sail catching a warm wind at sea. Standing at the front of the school, she exchanged hellos with Mr. Cherokee, the trusted figure in the school. What's your name, he asked amiably. Melody, came the gentle reply. As she made her way towards the nurse's office, her heart raced with a mixture of anxiety and relief. Knocking softly on the door, the Choctaw woman welcomed her in with a bright voice, immediately filling the room with positivity. Melody's gaze fell upon her little guy lying on the bed. Rushing over, her embrace enveloped him, reminiscent of a kangaroo safeguarding its joey. Thank God you're safe, she gasped, feeling the gentle rise and fall of his tiny body, like the ebb and flow of a serene tide. What happened? she questioned, noticing the bruises marking his arm. The boy's reply was filled with haunting images, choky sharp spikes and nails. I'm bad, he whispered, each word piercing Melody's heart as she fought back tears, compelled to understand as more details emerged. The tale of Ms. Trunchbull surfaced, her cruel reign having darkened the halls with fear, renaming their beloved school to Crunchum. Hall Melody's embrace tightened, protective and fierce. Thank you for keeping him safe, Miss Choctaw, she said earnestly grateful for the nurse's nurturing spirit. With a promise to care for her son's bruises, she lifted him into her arms, assuring him he was not bad, only misunderstood. As he spoke of the mean woman who denied them joy, Melody reassured him that they would create a world without fear, illustrating a safe haven free of painful memories. Meanwhile, Mr. Cherokee was busy restoring dignity to the school, dismantling the intimidating sign that had marked a dark chapter in their community, replacing it with the familiar comforting emblem, a lively cyan sign depicting a TP, was a step towards healing, manifesting hope for a brighter tomorrow. As he looked back at the school, memories flooded back, warming his spirit, showing every child deserves a space to feel safe and appreciated. All was slowly becoming right again in their cherished school, step by step. As Melody and her little guy stepped into the warmth of their home, she wrapped him in her arms, cradling him with a soothing sway akin to a gentle boat rocking on the calm ocean. Her voice, sweet and comforting like hot fudge slowly melting over an ice cream sundae, filled the air as she whispered, Are you okay, little buddy? His small voice trembled, filled with sorrow, as he replied, No, I'm bad. In that moment, Millie's embrace tightened around him, a sturdy shield against the forces that threatened to weigh him down. Don't say that, she urged gently. That's not you. You're always happy. I want you to remain that way. The innocence of her words wrapped around him like a soft blanket, trying to push out the doubts planted by others. 
But the boy could not escape the chill of Miss Trunchbull's words. If we're happy, she puts us in the chokey. A shiver danced down his spine, but the warmth of his mother's presence kept the darkness at bay. The rhythmic beating of her heart resonated next to his, creating a calm sanctuary filled with love amidst the chaos outside. Out of the window, the wind began to whisper, playfully tousling Melody's hair as it danced around her son's face. It felt as if nature herself was trying to wash away the harmful energy that had settled upon him. With each gentle movement and breeze, Melody hummed a sweet melody, her voice rising and falling like waves lapping against the shore. Each note intertwined with another, creating a tapestry of sound that reassured him of her unwavering love. Despite the chaos surrounding Miss Trunchbull, now forced into a kilt and tormented by the relentless sound of bagpipes, inside this home, everything felt safe. The boy closed his eyes, letting the notes of his mother's song permeate his thoughts, battling the dark whispers of inadequacy. Melody leaned down, leaving a soft kiss atop his head, her breath warm and tender against his skin. Don't let anyone dim your light, little buddy, she whispered, sending a surge of hope into his heart, igniting a flame that even Miss Trunchbull could not extinguish. As the day drew to a close, the gentle hush of twilight enveloped the room where Melody and her little boy nestled down for the night. The soft notes of a lullaby danced through the air, wrapping him in a comforting embrace, steering his mind deeper into the realms of dreams. Melody, ever watchful, caressed his brow and whispered tenderly, I'll see you in the morning, little buddy. That soothing promise hung like a soft veil, sheltering him from the shadows of the night. But within the stillness, a sudden sharp wail sliced through the tranquility, words tumbling out like fears unleashed. Don't put me in the chokey, please, he cried, panic coloring his voice as it echoed through the house. Melody felt her heart shred at the sound. She knew the oppressive grip of nightmares, the kind that clawed at the edges of a child's innocence. I would never put you in the chokey, she tried to assure herself, her thoughts racing to trace the source of his distress. Through the blanket of shadows, she found him. Her little guy tangled in the grips of a nightmare, his tiny frame trembling. It's okay, little buddy. It's just a dream, she cooed softly, her heart aching as he shook his head vehemently, whispering, No, it's real, the chokey. I don't want to go. Melody stepped closer, enfolding him in her arms, warm and protective. There's no chokey here, buddy. It's just us, she said her voice a steady anchor against the storm of the wind his dreams had conjured. But still, his somber words pierced her with despair. There's a mean woman in my room. Please don't put me in the chokey, mother. An urgency washed over her, and she kissed his forehead gently, feeling the weight of his fears. I would never put you in the chokey, my little guy, she whispered. You're safe with me. More than anything Miss Trunchbull could do, let's drift back to those peaceful dreams, okay? Slowly, the remnants of that mean woman faded, replaced by the warm lullabies of his mother, who wrapped loving cords of comfort around him. With a soft kiss on his head, sleep reclaimed him. The night continued. I wished for peace, under the caring watch of stars until dawn unraveled its gentle light. In the morning, as soft rays spilled into the room, Melody returned, patting his back tenderly. Hey, little buddy, everything okay? He stirred his lips curving into a slight smile, yet the weight of shadows still lingered. I don't want to go to the chokey. Melody's heart ached anew as she folded him in her warmth. There's no chokey, my little buddy. It was just a dream. Remember, don't let anyone tell you that you're bad, because I know that's not you. She smiled gently, her words like sunlight filtering through leaves. The innocence in his gaze questioned, but why is Miss Trunchbull in our house? She took a deep breath affirming with conviction. Miss Trunchbull is not here, buddy. She's with the bagpipes. We're going to sail away on our little ship. As sunlight streamed through the classroom windows, Melody felt a wave of inspiration wash over her. Today was special. She had found something that would bring joy to her little buddy. With a joyful tone, she called out, Hey, little buddy! Her voice danced in the air, lifting her son's spirits as she presented him with a sailor's uniform, bright and adorned with playful maritime motifs. Thought you might want to wear this, she said, excitement twinkling in her eyes. She dressed him quickly, insisting, this will show you how you really are. 
each button fastened with love, each stitch filled with aspirations. The morning unfolded as she enveloped him in a hug so tight, it felt like the embrace of a bagpipe's melody, warm and comforting. With a wave and a smile, she sent him off to school, confident in the joy he would spread upon arrival. The friendly Mr. Cherokee welcomed him with open arms, and the sight of his turkey teacher brought a chuckle to the little guy's face. But as he made his way towards Sarah, his protective teacher, something caught his eye. A peculiar box that seemed out of place. Panic surged through him and he recoiled, shouting in fear, No, no, not again, not the chokey! He bolted, heart racing as Mr. Cherokee called after him, Be careful, little buddy. Try not to run, are you okay? Despite Mr. Cherokee's reassurances, the box loomed larger in the little guy's imagination. Right there, I don't want to go in it, he exclaimed in sheer dread. Mr. Cherokee approached calmly, replacing fear with logic. Oh, that's just one of our trash cans. It's not what you think. I'm going to have a long talk with Miss Trunchbull about what she did, he explained. It was then the little guy revealed his nightmare. Miss Trunchbull was in my room, Mr. Cherokee smiled. Well, you have a sailor's uniform now and nothing can stop you. You're like the lighthouse that calls the ships in. With newfound bravery, the little guy decided to embrace the day, mister. Cherokee suggested they take a picture to send to Melody, which brought a radiant smile to his face. Meanwhile, Mr. Turkey, the ever-enthusiastic teacher, joined them, guiding him towards Sarah, who welcomed him warmly. Hello, buddy, come on in. There's no joke anymore, she said with reassuring cheer. The other students admired his sailor's uniform and shouted in unison, filling the room with delighted laughter. Back home, Melody received the picture, her heart swelling with pride and joy upon seeing her little bunny in the sailor's uniform, complete with an actual sail, ready to navigate the waters of childhood challenges. As the vibrant chaos of the school enveloped Melody, her heart clenched at the sight before her. She gazed at the framed picture, her little guy adorned in a sailor's uniform, a symbol of innocence and aspiration. Tears brimmed in her eyes, encapsulating the bittersweet pang of motherhood. The joy of his achievement clashed sharply with the memories of his struggles, especially under the harsh glare of authority that seemed to stifle his spirit. Meanwhile, the tension in the air thickened as Mr. Cherokee stood firm, confronting Miss Trunchbull with a searing intensity. His words cut through the air. Not only did you injure that little guy yesterday, he asserted, the weight of his disappointment heavy, but you also bestowed upon him a nightmare he should never have to endure. Miss Trunchbull, unyielding in her views, flicked her wrist dismissively, hinting at her belief that discipline meant toughness rather than nurturing. The voices of community members rose like a rallying cry outside the school, a chorus against the rigid expectations imposed on children. No more, Miss Trunchbull. No more Chokey, they chanted a powerful call for change. Just then, the distant sound of bagpipes danced through the air, hinting at a celebration, a farewell to tyranny. At that moment, Melody's heart soared as she spotted her little guy bounding toward her, a whirlwind of energy and pride. Hey, little bunny, Ma, she squealed, rushing to engulf him in a warm embrace, as if shielding him from the harsh realities of the world outside. Once cocooned in her arms, her little guy began to share tales of his day, recounting his encounter with the ominous trash can that resembled the chokey. But Mr. Cherokee told me it was just a trash can, he assured her, seeking reassurance in his mother's comforting presence. Melody's heart swelled with pride, their connection stronger than the challenges he faced at school. See what that sailor's uniform does for you. She laughed gently, her words a bomb against his worries. In a gentle embrace, the little guy felt a warmth that melted away his worries. Cradled in Melody's arms, he found solace, a comforting cocoon that shielded him from the harsh realities of the world. Her soft words wrapped around him like a hug, igniting his spirit in the safest of spaces as she whispered, I love you, little guy. Melody's voice was a soothing balm. With each kiss on the top of his head, a surge of affection filled the air lifting the little guy just a bit higher. I wish someone could have told me that yesterday before I went into that box, he confessed, his eyes glistening with memories of fear and confinement. Her heart responded with understanding, swelling with the truth of what he felt. 
You're more than that box, little buddy. You're a sailor, she cooed, reinforcing his worth against the painful echoes of Miss Trunchbull's scornful words. As darkness lingered in the past, the community outside began to wake. The Arapaho man, a guardian amongst them, rejoiced at the school's rebirth, a renewal of shared hearts ready to uplift the little guy and his friends. Mama, he called to Melody, his adoration as sweet as icing on a cake. Yes, love, she responded, her pulse hitting an uplifting rhythm. Inside, her heart triumphed, feeling how profoundly he valued their bond at that moment. Their connection was palpable, stronger than the torment from yesterday's whispers. You mean a lot to me, she admitted, her voice wavering but resolute. Nestled in the tightest embrace, he felt temperature rising, a warmth spilling over like melted chocolate. Her eyes brimmed, and a few tears made their descent as the realization hit them both. Love can often emerge from despair. Suddenly, news broke of triumph echoing through the community. A distant chokey had been smashed. The little guy's words, wrapped in longing and hope, stirred a collective resolve within those around them. Rallying together, community members united, their actions fueled by the little guy's proclamation, demolishing the remnants of fear Miss Trunchbull had instilled. They stood together, igniting change. Their unity a testament to resilience, anchoring hope for a new beginning.